hello and welcome back and it's time for another should you buy or otherwise known as my 5v5 the videos where i give you five reasons to buy a new piece of nas architecture and five reasons why you may wish to give it a miss this is the dva3221 it is their four bay gpu equipped network video recording digital video analysis NVR NAS. Man alive, that's a long title, but seriously, from Synology, this is one of the most unique solutions in their entire portfolio. Originally released right at the closing stages of 2020, we've done a hardware review, there's links to it in the comments and all that, but today's video, again, it's a nice short, sharp shot where we want to talk about five reasons you want it, five reasons you might not. So let's crack straight on with it. Reason number one, you may want to go for this NAS, unsurprisingly, is all that AI stuff. For those that aren't aware, the surveillance station software this system arrives with is not the same as the surveillance station that arrives with any other Synology NAS. This is one that is powered with AI analytics and AI analysis. So what that means is the feeds that are being fed into this device from all the different IP cameras, I've got a few dotted around the office, this will analyze these live for people, for things, for objects, and it will also make AI-assisted uh, conclusions from these, such as uh, lines being drawn for people counting, such as missing objects or foreign objects that have been introduced into a field of camera. Then you've got thing recognition, people recognition, and facial recognition, where it can keep a database of all of the staff members, your family members, everything in the field of view, so that when alerts happen, the alerts can be tailored. So. If there's people moving around in, in the foyer of a building, you want to know when it's someone who shouldn't be in the building gets flagged by security. This will do that live. There's also smart um, v, uh, feed analysis where you can run checks on previously recorded footage, which will then get picked up by the AI in any one of those criteria just mentioned. You can scan through old recordings. It does the job very, very well. And it is one of only two Synology solutions that have that AI-powered stuff. It can run six different um, AI-assisted um, uh, recording elements at any given time across the whole system. So again, it doesn't matter if you've got like 30 cameras or whatever in your business environment, you can only run up to six simultaneous operations on that. But nevertheless, this having that feature puts it way, way, way ahead of other Synology solutions. Next, while we're on the subject of this device and why it's different to other devices, let's talk about camera licenses. For those that aren't aware, camera licenses are when uh, NAS arrives, typically in Synology's case, with two camera licenses where you can add two cameras. And if you want to add more cameras, then you have to pay a fee of around 30 to 50 pounds per camera. The reason they do this is it allows the surveillance software to be available to all tiers of network attached storage users in the Synology brand. But at the same time, if you're a business or enterprise level user that's really, 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 really going to use that software, it allows those users to have to be, you know, pay a little bit more because they're going to be buying their business insurance, their employees, that sort of stuff on it with there's higher stakes. So in order to keep the platform as good as it can be for everyone, it is partially subsidized in this way. Why am I telling you? Because this device arrives with eight camera licenses by default. You can do the maths if you like, but most other Synology devices, with the exception of the MVR series and these DVA units, they all arrive with two, and this has got eight straight off the bat, which again, remember, this supports all of those AI services and they are all rolled in. Just to add the camera, boom, you're ready to rock. So again, eight camera licenses really, really, really shows how this is optimized for that surveillance station software. Another thing that really sets this device apart from the other NVR solutions like the NVR 1219 and the VH series, the VH960 and stuff, is that this solution arrives with the ability to use both DSM and surveillance station with those other NVR units locked to just surveillance station. This is a real, real, I hate seagulls. This device here gives you the option of not only taking advantage of all that AI stuff within surveillance station, but also the ability within this station manager to take advantage of the collaboration suite for office, chat, mail, off, uh, um, drive, and more. On top of that, you've got the multimedia suite of um, uh, some of the photos, moments, um, photo station, um, um, audio station, video station, then you've got um, the virtual machine manager, then you've got hyper backup, then you've got active backup suite, you've got an entire range of applications in the station manager that your business 
can factor in to their operational network environment and then you've got the AI stuff on top. It's not forcing you to choose like those other surveillance solutions in their portfolio and you've still got all those licenses too. Another advantage of this system, and again, this is slightly more wide towards the majority of um, surveillance station um, use on Synology NAS, but I do think nonetheless it is a reason to highlight it on this device in some ways even more. This system can be accessed in all of its feeds, control, customization, configuration, and more, both via the web browser user interface and the client mobile app, uh, client desktop applications. Some other surveillance platforms have very restrictive camera control and camera feeds via the web browser due to plugins being required and how they run within the browser window. Even if you are using any kind of web browser, they just won't be usable. Surveillance Station allows you to access it fluidly and natively via the web browser, remotely, internet access, uh, network, whatever, and those client applications as well. But the reason this stands out so slightly more is you've got access to all of the AI setup and implementation via the web browser. There's only really one feature with the AI um, existing video analysis that has to be done on the client, but everything else can be done via the web portal, including all those AI services and setup, which is something, again, when we look at other brands, and by other brands, I of course mean QNAP, who have started integrating AI supported services, those can st are still not able to be set up fully via the web browser in one straight beginning to end setup there. And this is something very unique to this device and definitely is props to Synology there on the way they've created the architecture for the AI uh, supported services on this surveillance system. Lastly, noise. This system is actually surprisingly low noise when in operation. Right now, we've got a microphone around about a foot, foot and a half away from this system right now. If you don't know me, if you don't believe me, listen. That's how close I am to the mic. What I'm going to do is get this power cable in here. And I'm going to power this device up. So again, you're going to hear the drives clicking a little bit, but I want you to listen for the fan and background operation. We hear the drives. But that general hum there, that is the noise this system makes when in operation at all times. So again, I'm not going to keep this on for the remainder of the video, but I will say for quite an aggressive surveillance system, and I know this is just at boot, but we've had this system running underneath the table for about two weeks we're doing our other videos. You even saw me do some surveillance videos as well while the system was about one meter away. And even then, you couldn't pick it up there in the background. And that's how quick the system boots as well, by the way. But yeah, that is for me quite operation on this system, given it's metal chassis there on the outside, large rear mounted fan, an active, um, sorry, passive cooling all the way around, and the GPU card inside having its own fan to me, really does stand out for how this system is low volume and low ambient noise when in operation. But of course, nothing is perfect and there are reasons why this system may not be suitable for you and your storage needs, particularly for you MVR users that like to take advantage of the more standalone setups. It has to be said that this system for me lacks one core feature that I think a lot of modern MVR systems generally arrive with. And that is the fact that it does not feature an, in, uh, an HDMI out. There are no visual direct influence ports there. We have LAN ports, we've got USB, we've got expansion and we've got power, but the GPU card behind here does not have the HDMI usable, which is really, really weird because when we took it apart in the hardware review, we were able to find that the, P uh, the PCIe uh, GeForce, the NVIDIA graphics card in here has HDMI and DVI on it. And Synology has released direct output HDMI surveillance NASes in that NVR and VH series mentioned. So it's a real shame that you don't have standalone surveillance access to this. A number of you may say, well, you can access it via the web browser. What are you complaining about? A lot of people like to have standalone access to their surveillance system as well as network access in case of network problems and for troubleshooting on site. And I think the lack of HDMI on this is just one of those small things I think that people are a little bummed out by, myself included. 
Another slight negative for me, and I do think a number of you did highlight this very early doors when this was mentioned, this surveillance system is certainly one that has been designed around the idea of larger scale uh, implementation. The fact it has eight camera licenses already indicates that. The fact that it can support up to 30 cameras, I think it's 32, maybe even 35, and it's got that AI support suggests that this has got big, big business in mind. So what's my complaint? If it hasn't already said on the title card, it's only got one GBE, and I get You've got link aggregation there, fine. You've got access to take advantage of link aggregation to get up to four GBE, so around 440, maybe 450 megabytes per second with link aggregation in a switch. But it would be infinitely better if this system had 10 GBE. And I know some of you might think it's a big ask. And maybe the PCIe lanes would present a limitation. 2.5, 5 GBE then if need be. But... The fact that um, if you've got loads and loads of cameras dotted around, and of course, even though they're connected via standard gigabit Ethernet, they're not completely delivering a gigabit um, of connect, uh, bandwidth throughput. They're not saturating a full 109 megs each. I get it. But once you are feeding all of those cameras into this, these can potentially cause quite a bottleneck. You're telling me 30 cameras that are delivering um, over Ethernet each, even if each of them was only utilising five megabytes or even two megabytes that's still quite a substantial amount of throughput coming through to this system where you are forced to take advantage of link aggregation where if you had a 10 gb e port and particularly if you're going to use the disk station the dsm type stuff with this on the side as well as all the surveillance i think those 1 gbe ports are a little bit limiting for what this can do and particularly when you look at the specifications of the dva stuff that you do need to have quite um, I'd say high 20 to 25 frames per second cameras in operation to ensure that the um, AI uh, analysis is as accurate as possible. The more frames, the more in, the more it can analyze and more accurate it's going to be, which of course increases the amount of um, traffic coming from those cameras. So yes, 10 GB on this would have liked it, at the very least 2.5 or 5G. My next complaint wasn't even one of my complaints. It was one of the early complaints when I did the hardware review for this device because once this was launched, even its predecessor, the DVA3219, both of those devices met with a very, very similar criticism and that is that this system is only a four bay. It's a four bay system. Four hard drives, SSDs if you like, but hard drives. I've got this device right now populated with Seagate Skyhawk hard drives there, 14 TBs. That's still a pretty substantial amount of storage and I've got it in an SHR or you can run a RAID 5 if you choose. The result is there's a decent amount of storage with those large drives, sure, but that's still a lot of eggs to go into a rather small number of baskets, it has to be said. And given that um, Synology has a range of 8 and 12 base solutions and that this is the second generation of the DVA series, I'm surprised that they've still opted for a four bay. Yes, before you say it, I know it can be expanded. It's got two eSATA expansion ports that allow you to add giant expansions to this device. If we look at the rear of it, we can see that it's got the eSATA connections there on the rear for attaching those expansions nice and easily. Say giant expansions, they just uh, increase the amount of storage that we're already seeing with those uh, DX series expansions. But nonetheless, default storage for me, four bays is a little, Mm, limiting for me and particularly when you are talking about high-end surveillance services and those eight camera licenses the amount of footage that eight cameras if they maintain seven days of active recordings and you've got those AI um, built in as well four bays of storage is going to fill up pretty quick and particularly if you're going to utilize the DSM applications on the side as well so maybe a six or an eight bay next time my next point goes back to here where that GPU card is once again this GPU card can't be used for anything but surveillance and i know it's a bit nitpicky and i know this is a dva optimized device but they have allowed disk station access to the system and they have clearly managed the, for the hardware architecture and in particular surveillance station to take advantage of the assets of that gpu card so it's just a darn shame that you can't utilize it in things like virtualization using Synology's virtual machine manager that would be so incredibly useful taking advantage of that PCIe card in transcoding of multimedia, which I know is a bit more home-wise on this device, but still nonetheless, I think that GPU card only being used by that single process when um, Synology have such a wide range of applications, some of which are quite graphical, I think it's a real shame you can't use this GPU card for anything other than surveillance. 
My final complaint about this device comes down to the traditional architecture internally, namely the fact that it has a quad-core Atom CPU that the majority of the Synology range of systems now, as we've gone through the last 12 months, have now ditched away from and gone towards the AMD series, that V1500B, and the fact the system arrives with 8 gig of memory. Now, the 8 gig of memory I can kind of agree with, but still, even then, if you start pushing this device out to its capacity, that 8 gig, 8 gig is going to look pretty thin. But 8 gig, I think, by default, even if you're using all 8 camera licenses off the bat, should be fine. No, my big problem is that CPU. That CPU, which is featured in a lot of the 17, 18, and 19 series of, uh, from Synology. And this is a 21 series box with a GPU card. And I think potentially that processor could act as a bottleneck when this system's being utilized. I think there are better processors out there, and certainly there are ways in which are including a GPU card in this system and then sticking it with that processor is a bit of a shame given this device's price point there. But these have been five reasons why you should buy the DVA3221 and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, if you're looking for free advice on your next data storage solution, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares. And if you do know how to get rid of seagulls by the seaside, please get rid of them. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.